This is a habitat house right here. Hi. Hi there. Oh, she's so cute. We, we passed the lot by once or twice, and we're like, yeah, that's too skinny and squeezed in there. Nope, nope, keep yeah, going. Yeah, Chase is like, uh-uh, I'm not Stop. dealing with that. But then we got to know the neighbor, and all the other neighbors were playing around, a lot of kids on the street, and uh, he told us the history around, and then we said, okay. And plus, it was the cheapest lot from the city for $5,000. Okay, so I'm here in St. Petersburg, and I'm at the lot of Jalisa and Joni, who are a couple of women who are building a small house, kind of like a tiny house, only a little bit bigger size, um, here in South St. Petersburg, and um, it's an interesting project, so I'm going to give a little interview with them, and they'll tell us about what they're doing. Hi, my name is Jalisa Blackshear. I'm 26 years old, and I currently live in the city of St. Petersburg. Um, I was born and raised in Cape May, New Jersey, and um, I've been in the city for about seven years. Right now, I'm a full-time mother, a full-time student at St. Petersburg College. Hi, I'm Joni Spencer. I uh, moved to St. Pete three years ago with my three kids. I was living on a sailboat and traveling the world for 15 years or so before that. And now I'm settling here in St. Pete. It's an amazing place. Right now, I'm currently living at the Eco Village. Uh, Joni is living at the International House. And I guess we can all consider them like sister properties of one another. Um, and we live in community, so uh, I share a bathroom with four other residents. Um, I live in a cooperative setting. Um, Joni, she lives um, at a guest house, so she's constantly um, having travelers coming in and out. So she's used to, um, anyway, the cooperative setting, I guess. But this, it'll be different this time because it's just like two heads of the household rather than um, anyone un unexpected for now, and I guess because it's ours, I don't know, it's just different. We'll, we'll have, we'll feel empowered, so by nature it'll be a springboard to something else. We know. also won't be paying monthly rent, and that was a big thing. We're, you know, if you're not paying out five or six hundred dollars, even though it's minimal rent, still five or six hundred dollars a month is, if you're trying to live on a very minimal budget, that's a big chunk of money. I mean. Because it's time, it's like 20 to 30 hours of your time. So where can we be put in that time? So the lot was $5,000 and then you said there, your house, you want to put 20,000 into that. Yeah, right? we want to put 20,000, but give or take, we know we're going to spend 40 because of the unknown cost. Sure, yeah. But if that's our intention to spend $20,000, then we'll spend 40. Okay versus 40 and spending 80. Or 30 would be better, you know, yeah. even. But. And you're making a tiny house, right? Small house. Yeah, um, small tiny house. houses are technically uh, 350 square feet and okay. under, and then a small house is like uh, 355 to 1,000. So okay. our house is 988. Each side of the house is independent, and the center is the kitchen that's shared. So um, the actual space that each family, Jaleesa's family will have a space that's not not more than 400 square feet actually no. which is tiny so that that took a lot and also then then my space for my family is not more than 400 square feet so I had to keep getting my head around it and you know walking around like it's not that big and this is what we're gonna do and we're gonna be living in there and it's not that big it's just keeping so we're calling the project um, project base camp because we want it to be something that we can just set our bags um, and have other people set their bags at. The, the architect Tim Road helped us make these plans. This is one of the latest renditions. So the, um, the house is set up like a, a long rectangle on the lot. So it's basically an open studio right now. We want to build the house um, the simplest as we can to get the certificate of occupancy. So putting the minimum electricity in, minimum uh, sort of plumbing. We worked with the architect to have the um, shed roof design uh, as simple as we could um, for building because we're gonna be building with our friends and uh, family. So keeping everything as simple as we could that way and also that way um, it's financially more sustainable. I have three kids and Jalisa has one. My, uh, my middle child, he's in a wheelchair as well so we've designed the um, <clears throat> the house to be wheelchair accessible. We want to get our neighbors involved and introduce them to, um, I guess you would call it like a, a, a different phase of living and just, yeah, create the intention and 
uh, let everyone realize that it is possible to do it yourself, I think, especially living in this area. We're so conditioned uh, to rely on other resources and not really rely on the resources that we have within us. And um, there are certain barriers up that uh, prevent that from happening, whether it be uh, the city with codes and zoning or uh, the city not um, creating grants or funding for people to um, have projects like we're doing um, instead of being um, contractors who want multifamily dwellings like they're giving them thirty thousand dollars here ten thousand dollars here we want to get our community involved and just create awareness of being independent and encouraging really the mothers i think too that's a big point like sh straight head of household um, and ultimately providing here on base camp like a social platform for engagement i say it all the time but it's really a vital uh, for us here in South St. Petersburg that we have that connection with one another. So uh, this project is bigger than ourselves and we realize that and um, we're ready to make an impact and a difference in the city of St. Petersburg. Um, I think we're still trying to work out the details whether we want to put the property in a community land trust or we want to give it to the neighborhood association or the initiative which all require business models and how can we replicate that throughout the city of St. Petersburg so it's not just about us like having a home and living here. It's like, all right, we realize this is only temporary, but we don't want this land to be sold with all the gentrification that's coming into the city. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a time where we can, if we wanted to, we would be able to sell this land and be set for a while, but that's not the intention. We wanna uh, preserve the culture here and the history. By preserving the land at affordable prices, really, and the community land trust is one idea that we went into with this project, but but like Jalisa just said, creating that business model is quite a task as well. It requires a lot of research and, and work, and right now we're just focusing on getting the house yeah. together. But we do project that we will be able to replicate this model uh, throughout the city of St. Petersburg. How? We don't really know yet. We can't really foresee, but I think it's working itself out anyway. The seed will be planted, and if anybody wants to um, tend that, Garden. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for uh, Thank you, giving this interview. This is great. Yeah. I'm excited to see, uh, you know, your progress next time I'm here, and I'll, I'll make another video showing what what you're up to. Yeah, and maybe maybe be next done, time. Right? Yeah. yeah, and maybe there'll be a couple other yeah. very similar projects too popping up in the works. Yeah. yeah. Like the Shores <laughs> video, you know. Living simply so others can simply live. Project Base Camp. To find out more about Project Base Camp, visit their Facebook page. And don't forget to subscribe to Hardcore Sustainable and like and share the video. Mm -hmm.